Okay. Fantastic. Thanks, Sam. Saved at the last moment. All right, nice to see a few new faces here. It's great to see everyone. We'll kick off officially in one minute. We're just waiting for the room to fill up. Okay, it's 4 or 5. If people are late right. at this point. Nice to see a few new faces here. It's great to see everyone. Uh, whoever has got the uh, YouTube stream open, can they mute themselves? Or I got it open. Better? I don't hear yeah. myself. That's good. All right. Welcome, everybody, to Gina's Engineering All Hands for December 14, 2021, still this year, right? As you can see, I am here on location at a coffee shop in Berlin because I just got my booster and I'm a little far from home. We've got mood lighting, nothing but the finest for our lovely community. So we are switching things up a little this time around. Instead of doing one talk, we are giving you not two talks, not three talks, but four talks for the price of one. And they're even shorter and easier to digest. So each talk will be about seven minutes, maybe a bit less. And we won't be using boring old PowerPoint or Google Slides. We'll be uh, sharing our screens, you'll be seeing live coding, you'll be seeing the real world stuff we're building, or you'll be seeing our lovely Gina faces. Lucky you. All right, so the agenda for today, we have got, where's the agenda? Okay, so first up, our developer relations specialist, Shabam, is going to introduce us to the learning boot camp that we, wow, we've been working hard on that one. Uh, our co-founder, Bing, will talk about the big news uh, our Series A round that we recently got and had a big party to celebrate. Uh, Tade will give a talk on the latest updates of Fine Tuner, our tool for tuning the weights of any deep neural network. And Giancarlo, one of our community members, will share some thoughts on how he uses Gina AI in his own project. So, uh, yeah, I'm Alex CG, uh, the lead at the Gina's DevRel lead. Our engineering all hands are on a monthly basis. They give you a quick overview of what's happening at Gina. Come learn new stuff, ask questions. You can do that in the Q&A in the chat at the bottom of your Zoom or in the YouTube comments on the live stream. And yeah, without further ado, I'll hand the mic over, so to speak, to Shabam and we'll get started. Over to you, Shabam. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Hey, everyone. My name is Shabam, and I'm a developer relations specialist at Chinaya. Today, I'll be talking about our latest release, Gina's Learning Bootcamp. So it, it's been since very long that we have been getting this overarching feedback from the community that to streamline the learning process at Gina, because Gina being a complex framework, we didn't have any structured process where you can just go and get started and quickly learn and grab the concepts to build cool applications with it. So that's why we decided to create uh, the learning bootcamp where you can easily go in and get started with Gina. I'll quickly share my screen to give you a look up the learning bootcamp and how it looks like. So the idea behind this learning bootcamp is to uh, minimize the learning curve at Gina and allow you and enable all the other developers with some experience in machine learning to use this uh, uh, cool open source tech stack that we have at Gina and create cool search applications. So the bootcamp is divided into three tracks, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, covering all the developers with different skill levels. We have got something for you on the learning bootcamp. Wherever you fit in, you can you can choose which which path to take, and you can get started with that. So the beginner track generally covers the very basic concepts of Gina about neural search, what uh, about the very fundamental concepts that 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 you that you need to learn to get started. So you can you can scroll down and you can see the table of contents that we have got in the beginner section. It uh, has a lay down uh, sequential steps which you can follow. 
and towards the end you can you have a way of self evaluation where you'll get certificates which you can show on social media uh, after completing this particular track similarly we have got uh, intermediate section which introduces you in detail with the different components of gina like document executor flow uh, which are the key components for any of the application that you build at gina it also introduces you to gina hub which uh, which makes it very efficient and which reduces the time to a greater extent when you want to build applications and uh, build different use uh, use cases with gina you can easily use any pre-built executor built by someone else and built on top of it so then then it goes a little bit deeper into the different data types on how you can manipulate different data types with gina and create applications with that similarly if you will go to our last section which is advanced section it talks about data types like audio video tables and 3d mash how you can use them to build applications search applications with gina and how you can serve gina in production and towards the end it covers our latest product that we have released uh, recently which is fine tuner so once you have got everything in place how you can fine tune your deep learning models to get uh, relevant results which uh, which are best suited to your use case so let's go and deep dive into one of the section and understand the pedagogy behind this uh, entire bootcamp so it starts uh, it has these uh, bullet pointers which you can just click on and it gives it gives you a brief introduction about what the topic is on the same page you can just read that up if you understand it it's great if you don't then we have got you covered with the videos explanation and the docs as well similarly once you learn about neural search then you can go ahead quickly go ahead and uh, try the ex uh, try the example application that we have posted by yourself to see uh, the power of gina real hand after you are you are convinced that gina is something that you want to get started with that you want to learn you can quickly go ahead and install install gina everything that you need we have got you covered on the uh, on this very page you can just go ahead copy this command and paste it in your uh, command prompt and you can easily install gina you can do it on any linux based system macbook or windows similarly if you don't want to install any dependencies you can just go ahead and Uh, run it in in the docker itself then after it after that it follows three simple hello world examples that we have curated for you for that also you can just read uh, the context of th these examples here on the same page and you can just copy these commands paste it in the terminal and see how it works you can play with these different applications to see how different components interact with gina and how the results come out for these different such applications once you are done with all of these you can then just go ahead and learn the basic key components that uh, basically every other application on gina is based on document executor flow so it will give you a very brief walk through of what these mean you can read them up and then again it is followed by a interactive video that we have created and after after all of that now it's time to try on uh, try your hands on some basic code so we have got you covered we have uh this github repository which walks you step by step through uh, the different uh, code be uh, code parts of gina so you can run a very basic application once you check out this uh, github repository and we highly recommend before moving further that you should join our community because the key part of learning process is learning from peers and learning from community members because that that adds a lot to your learning process than whatever uh, we can teach you via the learning boot camp or, or via any tutorial for example and towards the end when you uh, finish all these steps you can quickly go ahead and take this quiz you have to click on this quiz and this hosts uh, multiple questions and all of them are uh, multiple choice questions you can just go ahead and choose and test your knowledge once you're done with it you can submit uh, submit the quiz and if you score above a certain threshold you'll get a cool certificate that i'll show in a minute how it looks like and which you can show on social media and add it as a skill to your portfolio so we have launched learning portal a few days back and got a overwhelming response from the community people are already using it and sharing their learning journey uh, with the community and with everyone out there and this is the kind of cool certificates that you can get and these are our community members who are already using gina gina's learning bootcamp i'm learning different concepts with it
So yeah, uh, if you want to build uh, cool applications with Gina, and if you don't know where to start, don't wait, don't, don't wait. Get started with the learning portal. Uh, get started with the learning bootcamp. Just go on and visit learn.gina.ai and get started. Yeah, thank you. And hey, Karunya, you're here, right? I mean, your certificate on screen and your hair, wow. You know, don't let the fame go to your head. All right, uh, as I said in the chat, if you have any questions, uh, stick them in the Q&A box down there. Any questions at all? Uh, all right, like how does Shabam get such lovely bouffant hair? Okay, now we shall pass it over to him and he will announce the big news if you've been living under a rock and haven't heard it already. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Bing. Um, I'm calling from Beijing right now. Uh, we were hosting an event last week. Um, if you've been noticing around the news of all of the hackers around open source, we've recently announced our Series A fundraising uh, by 30 million in total. That's a very big amount. We really appreciate all of the support that uh, you guys, our lovely community, have given to uh, Gina Project and also our all of our um, potential usage. And we wanted to learn from you quite a lot. Um, but the, those knowledge really helped us shaping our product maturity quite a lot over the past year. And that has been recognized across the globe. So uh, we were lucky to get our investors, new investors uh, interest in us. Um, so that is also very important for us to um, cultivate our community, cultivate our development of the product even better. So all of the foundings will be invested heavily on the product maturity development and trying to bring the next level of a better experience of product usage of Gina ecosystem to you guys. Um, as you can tell, we've launched a new project that is fine tuner about two months ago, and there are quite some feedbacks and we definitely would love to hear more from you guys as well. Uh, the other thing is, apart from the foundings, uh, since the team is expanding, now we've got more of resources in our hand. We are also looking forward to expand our teams. Um, so we are expand our uh, team scope from uh, Berlin to all over the globe and also looking for future candidates to join us in, in the United States and uh, North America widely as well for the next year. So if you guys sitting here uh, would be interested or even uh, have some uh, friends to recommend working in this cool company, just let us know. Uh, you can find us in Slack. You can find us on our website. You can find us everywhere. So we would love to hear more from you and also improve from what you are expecting from Gina. That's right. We are pretty much everywhere. Not on TikTok yet, but if one of you community members wants to set up a channel and create a Gina dance, well, I think we should probably send you some swag if you do that. All right. Thanks for sharing the good news, Bing. Ah, and yeah, Bing was uh, mentioning Fine Tuna in his talk. And, you know, now we've got today, we will go into Fine Tuna in more depth and the recent developments in it. Over to you, today. Okay, yeah, uh, hello everyone. I'm gonna introduce to you some of the recent cool additions we've made to the fine tuner. Uh, in my talk, I'll just focus on the tuner part. Um, as you know, the fine tuner has uh, the labeler, which is an interactive, um, well, labeling slash active learning tool the tuning part, what actually does um, the model training, and the tailor part, which helps you turn any model into an embedding model. Um, we've also made some additions to tailor, uh, but in the interest of time, I'll focus on tuner only. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're gonna uh, see here is the introduction of uh, class data sets. Uh, so what's that? So uh, if some of you remember, when we launched Fine Tuner, uh, you had to structure a data set in a way that you manually created matches. So you created a root document 
and you append that matches to it, which will either positive or negative. Um, this is certainly works well for some cases, but you might have a case where you already have a data set and you have, I don't know, um, you have your items already labeled, you have, I don't know, cat one, whatever, cat two, dog one, dog two, so on, right? And uh, just from labels, you can already see that we could automatically create uh, the tuples or the triplets needed for the training. So we could match this this cat with this cat as a positive and this dog as a negative sample, right? Uh, before you had to do this manually, which could be, uh, which could take some time, um, but now we've automated it. So let's just go straight to an example. So let's create uh, train data. And this will be a oops, document array. And there's gonna be a bunch of documents there. So let's create the first document. Um, let's say it's gonna be some picture, doesn't matter. And we we give it label by setting the function label text. Uh, and let's say this is a cat. And then basically you can construct many such items in your data set. Uh, so I don't know, this will be cat, this will be dog, another dog, and yeah, another cat. And that's all you need to do in terms of data preparation. Um, basic thing is the label and then uh, within a fine tuner, we take care of creating the triplets and batching the data properly and all that. Um, of course, uh, we added other things too. So as you probably know, a big thing when training a uh, machine learning model, especially for example, working in computer vision is augmentations, right? I don't know, you randomly flip the image or something like that. Um, and we now support that too, because of course you could just pre-process everything. Uh, but this augmentation should be random. So now you could do something like this. So preprocess function is something that takes in a document and gives out well the whatever content it needs to. So in this case, I don't know, we could, for example, um, let's say we work with this data set, right? Um, so in this case, we want to extract the block and we, we add some random noise. So something. So this is, I don't know, the Gaussian noise augmentation. And that's it. And then you will pass this to the uh, tuner object on initialization, which I'll show in a minute. So that's for data. Next, what, well, let me maybe leave this here. Um, next, something that we've added is um, uh, our this hard, hard, easy miners. So um, we work with triplets or tuples, and um, you can construct from one batch, you know, all possible combinations of uh, free items such that you know one is from one class and two are from the other. Uh, and there can be many of those. And for some, it might be very easy for the system to recognize that, oh, these two images are definitely not the same, right? Now, if you compare a car and a cat, and you want to kind of discard this kind of combinations when training the model so that it converges faster. So this is what this kind of mining does. And for that, we've added, um, we've implemented uh, something called like hard easy miner, uh, where you can basically set these parameters. Um, this I'll show you in just a bit. I'm going to show you how to train. So that's another thing. And then what we added is uh, um, the possibility to uh, customize optimization. So what you can do now is to is to set uh, custom learning rate schedules and optimizers. So these are pretty standard things, um, but we're just glad to have them in the framework now. Um, and one other thing that we've added is the ability to visualize um, the training progress and the training results. Um, 
in an interactive way on weights and biases. So I'll also demonstrate this one in just a bit, uh, but this really enables you to um, train much more effectively because now you don't need to have your eyes glued to the progress bar to see how things are going and you can compare it among experiments easily. Okay, uh, I think that's yeah, kind of description of what we did for now. Now let me just jump into an example. So I have one prepared already uh, since it's a lot of things to write. So what we're going to be using is just uh, this uh, fashion MNIST uh, data set, pretty standard. We also going to use this preprocessing function. It's just some uh, dummy model we're going to use. So here, for example, we're using a custom learning rate schedule. So we started with this learning rate and then every 30 epochs, we're going to drop it by a half, for example. And I was talking about minor before. So here we're adding the easy hard mining with a easy positive and semi-hard negative strategy. It's just something that works well. You can read papers about it if you want. And finally, we're gonna add the logging. So that's pretty simple. You know, that's all the setup you need to do. And most of it is just, you know, creating your data set and your model. Um, there's very little uh, code that needs to be put to set up the tuner. And then we set up, you know, the tuner as you would usually do. And then we call feed function. So let's do this right now. So now it's uh, constructing the data set. It, it will be like 6,000, 60,000, I think. Yeah, 60,000 images for the train set and I think 10,000 for the evaluation set. So let's wait for this one a bit more. Okay, while we're waiting, I can also, ah, okay, it's gonna be, well, while we're waiting, I also mentioned that we've added uh, callbacks so that weights and biases logger is actually a callback. So this callbacks is just something where you can define, define I don't know, on these actions when the batch begins, do something. Um, we're using callbacks internally, for example, to implement this logger, to implement this progress bar and many other features that are coming soon, but you could also customize them and have them perform whatever auxiliary tests you need. So this and you know much else you can read about in the documentation. Okay, meanwhile, the training has started successfully, yay. And we can see, okay, it's already happening. So, you know, this is now telling us that um, weights and biases is logging this run. So let's maybe just go there and see what's happening. Okay, so, um, yeah, so you can see it's already beginning. So we're logging the training loss, we're logging the evaluation loss, you know, we're lo lo logging the learning rate, what epoch it is, and so on. So, okay, this will now take some time. We won't wait for it to finish. I can just show you, for example, I've ran, ran it before, and here's how it looks like, right? And here you can see also, you can easily compare different runs. So when you change one parameter, you want to see what's better, and that will be very easy to do. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much for the changes we have in right now, uh, and the release will come very soon, uh, either later today or early tomorrow. Um, but there's also some things that are coming uh, kind of soon after this release as well. So we're working on adding uh, checkpointing, which is useful either to save uh, the best model as you train so that you can, so you know, because Right now, by default, you are left with the model from the last epoch, but that may not be the best, but this will change. And we're adding the training checkpoint so that if your training is interrupted, you know, in epoch 10 after 100 hours of training, you can start off from that point instead of starting off from scratch. That and also we're adding an evaluator because now, as you can see here, we're just logging the evaluation loss. But what you're probably interested in are some metrics like mean average precision or heat rate you know, things from information retrieval, things that are kind of objective and stay the same, even if you change the loss function. And we already have an evaluator module, uh, but very soon this will be incorporated in the feed function. So this will evaluate your model every epoch. This will make it much easier to track the real progress of your model. Um, and of course we've added some useful things to Taylor, which is now uh, much more customizable and can handle more complex uh, models or tailoring techniques. 
uh, yeah, that's all from my side. And as I said, um, release is coming soon. So please check out the release note and the updated documentation. Thank you. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you, Tade. And for more information about FineTuner, you can visit finetuner.gina.ai. And all of our docs are there, all the information's there. And if you do end up using it on your own machine, there's a beautiful front end. So it can all be mouse driven or keyboard driven for fine tuning your deep neural network. <clears throat> all right. Last but not least, we have Giancarlo. Welcome to the stage. Giancarlo. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Hey, yeah, we hear you now. Yay. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, so yeah, maybe just a little presentation. So I'm Giancarlo. I'm a PhD student in Paris at Paris Saclay University. And uh, yeah, well, I started working with Gene a bit uh, over summer. And, uh, you know, then uh, once you start using it, uh, you just never come back. And so here I am. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I had the pleasure to develop a couple of nice projects uh, with Gina, using Gina in the, in the last month. And, uh, and yeah, so I will talk to you about my last project today. Uh, I will keep it very brief uh, and it is not going to be very technical, but feel free to ask whatever questions you want. And yeah, originally the idea was to do something like, uh, okay, code your own neural search engine for machine learning papers in five minutes. Uh, so it was meant to be like a live coding session but then uh, I realized that uh, and this is because in Gina it would be, be very easy to do like uh, my idea was that like using the framework you can really uh, you really have a lot of power and uh, that would have been a nice point of view I think on the thing but then I realized that you know like uh, downloading data sets preparing that all these kind of things uh, they do require much more effort. So uh, one of the things that I will try to show you is that actually the framework itself, it's so nice and easy to use while all the other part is not. Uh, but yeah, so this means it will not be a live coding experience. So I can show you an actual uh, project with the actual data. Okay, so let me go on with it. So... Uh, da, da, da. I will share my screen now. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen now. In case you don't you don't see, let me know. Uh, but yeah, so what is it about this last project? It's a, it's a neural search engine for machine learning papers. So what it means, it means that uh, I can take a, uh, a, a, a paper, like a research paper in machine learning. Uh, and usually, I mean, if you find a nice paper, you want to see, okay, what is the related literature to this paper? So what are similar papers treating similar arguments or any anyways, like a similar, uh, uh, similar research fields, right? So something, what, what are the related papers? Uh, and yes, so the idea is that you can take whatever uh, paper you like, like BERT, which is a very fancy, uh, I mean, a very important paper for a neural, uh, natural language processing. And uh, okay, here, let's say I take a piece of this abstract, I go in my search box, and I run my search. And uh, the idea is that now my, my search engine will just give me like... Uh, uh, papers which are related to BERT. Okay, so here are the results. Uh, already, like you see that the BERT is the first result, but I didn't really ask for it. I just give a, pay, a, a piece of the abstract. So this is a good indication that the model is working. And yeah, then uh, apart from that, what you have is this, like uh, all these related paper according to our model. Okay, good. So very simple application. Uh, this is what we are talking about. And now the idea is uh, how can you do this? Mm, and yeah, so first of all, you need, a, you need a model. So I will not get into details here, but uh, there is this very nice library, which is called the Sentence Transformers, which uses like Transformers model for natural language processing. Uh, a lot of people worked on this kind of models so in, with many different kinds of applications. And it turns out that the Allen AI lab, they came out with this Spectre model where they actually uh, trained a BERT model on scientific publications, okay? So I have here the paper, 
And so this is the paper basically on which the model is based. So their idea is that, okay, you have scientific papers, uh, you want, to, you want to, to understand how to make them, I mean, how to find similar papers based on a simple paper, right? On, on a certain paper, right? And uh, to do that, they try to, um, to exploit the citation network. So given the citations, the citation networks among papers, you can fine tune a BERT model to, to have your neural search, uh, uh, neural search model. Um, again, we're not gonna see the, the, this thing in detail, but uh, you know how neural search work. Basically, you do a vector search in, a, in an embedded space. And so here you can see that, uh, like, uh, at least based on, um, on different field of research, you see that these, uh, um, I mean, these papers cluster very well in the embedding space. Okay, so this is kind of a way to see how the model works. So you see the clustering in the embedding space. And uh, OK, good. We like this paper because we found something that uh, we needed. It seems to work nicely. Let's try it out. Uh, let's try it out. So uh, OK, let's look at the code. And here it's when I say that it's very easy because uh, OK, you, uh, I'm assuming that you guys know how a, a gene application works. So we just have uh, flows and executors, basically, and documents. And uh, OK, so for the, for the flows, nothing fancy. Actually, the, uh, ta -ta -ta. OK, yeah, the idea is that I use a simple indexer. OK, so this is the indexer that you find on the gene hub. We can look at it. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Ah, yeah. Sorry. Ginab, simple indexer. So this is an indexer that uses the document array map uh, of Gina. It will not scale uh, to very good performance, of course, if you deploy this thing, but for, uh, for, uh, for initial trials, it's, it's great. Uh, so I just used this, uh, uh, this indexer and then this other Spectre executor, okay? And then you can see that, uh, so this is for indexing, okay? But for the actual search, so when you want to do the search itself, uh, I mean, nothing, nothing more than that. We have the Spectre executor, we have the indexer, I just pass some parameters around, and I mean, very easy. And okay, and for the indexer, uh, so into the, ex oops, okay, into the executors, this is my simple indexer. So what uh, everything we care about basically is the encode function. And here you see, as we are used to, to, to know, like I, I have my model, I, I run the encoding over my documents, like very, very easy, like in 15 lines of codes, including comments and the spaces, basically, oops. Inclu including comments and, and the spaces, basically you have, uh, you have your model, okay? So, um, so yeah, this is, this is all of it. I showed you how it works. I'll, I'll have you just go around on the program. I didn't prepare this link, okay. Yeah, so that's it. So here you have also a GitHub uh, repository with, the, with this project, so you can look it out uh, more in detail. You can run it by yourself. And uh, in case you're interested in uh, contributing, just come uh, and visit. Okay, so that's all. I try to be very brief. Please uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much, and uh, sorry I dropped out there, everyone. And also sorry if there's any background noise. Nice use of streaming, by the way. Always love to see that. Excuse me, what? Uh, uh, ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm currently building an uh, example of my own based on multimodal fashion search. So using text to search images of fashion and also using screen. Yeah, I see. And uh, yeah. So uh, I know, sorry. I think I was delayed, but I didn't hear very well. The volume was not very. I think it's because I'm in a coffee shop and the uh, Wi Fi is not so good right now. Can everyone hear me okay? Ah.
Okay, yes, I was reading now the comments. So yeah, Alex, uh, absolutely the streamlit front end. Uh, it's uh, very nice and makes it easy to to actually use the Gina products, even though the um, uh, the Swagger UI is actually pretty handy for development during development. So I mean, also on that point, uh, I mean, uh, even without streamlit already, we are kind of uh, ready to really try out things nicely. So. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, looks like there are no questions. And I mean, if we still have time, I can, uh, I, I will go on, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I will talk to you guys. I will just show you like uh, 30 seconds, just show also these markets, relevant markets, irrelevant. Uh, so why I show you this? Just because you, you Gina people talk a lot about the fine tuner nowadays. And yeah, so basically this is a way to introduce the fine tuning into the user face, I would say. So um, fine tuning your model will always be something you want to do at a certain point to get like better and better search results. And uh, again, like it's just very easy to do. So, I mean, this is also a nice example of how to introduce fine tuning in, in, the, in the interface. Okay, we have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so a question from Marcus. Uh, super cool application. Is there a way to limit the number of documents to show as well as the results? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, now also again, ah, okay, I'm not sharing my screen anymore, but let me share it again. Uh, Okay. Okay, it should be. Ooh. Absolutely. So now I'm showing, I believe, one, two, three, four, five on your results. Uh, in principle, you can show as many of the results as you want. And uh, like the best way to, to limit the number of results is just tweaking this uh, top K parameter. So, and this is something that, uh, again, usually you do in uh, Gene applications. Also like you have, uh, you can set the request size that you send to your flows uh, over HTTP and everything. So you certainly have uh, ways to do that. Like the way I did it was to, to just uh, like patch uh, pass this argument as the the top k results that I want, and uh, yeah, usually I mean the point is that uh, if you just give the top five results, as in my case, you will have a little less computation at a certain point. So, so yeah, definitely you can. Cool. That's that's really cool. Thanks. Yeah. So, or if you, uh, or anyone from the from the um, participant, if you have any questions, please do feel free to raise your hand or uh, throw it in the in the Q and A box, and then we'll pick it up. That's definitely a very awesome project. Yes, we do have a question coming from Sefi. So have you considered to add the images from the papers as a cross model? Uh, very nice question. So um, not so much for now. Um, that's because the point is that there are so many steps before that, that it would be nice to try that the images comes after. Uh, but yeah, that's a good idea. Absolutely. Uh, so I didn't think deeply about that before. Um, but yeah, it's certainly, I mean, absolutely, it would be very nice. The point is that probably uh, it would be nice not to, re I mean, like now you search with an abstract, right? 
but uh, I mean, you say, why, why can't I search with a picture? Of course, that would be great. So probably if I have a certain picture and I want to look for research papers related to that, and I, here I can think in biology, I guess, like if you have some um, microscopy picture from biology, I guess this multimodal thing would be super interesting. So yeah, no, I, I didn't really think about that yet because there are a lot of other steps in the in between but um, it's an open source project so come to the issues and let's discuss the approach yep we we've seen quite oh there is a raising hand let's give the mic to you yeah hello can you hear me yes Okay, uh, thanks Giancarlo for the presentation, very nice. Uh, so yeah, I imagine in my use case, I would like to see uh, papers with a large number of citations appear first in the search. Uh, I mean, of course they have to be relevant, but also I would like to see like important papers show up. So do you have any idea how we could encode this information of citations somehow to the search results? Thanks. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, as a first step, I mean, uh, as a first step, I would do that as a pre-processing of the results of the search in the sense that uh, for now, what you've seen is uh, like just a very simple prototype, right? Like you have your search, you have your results, uh, you can fine tune. So that's already like a little step more, but nothing else. But the idea is that, of course, uh, there are a lot of info related to a paper. I can think like uh, related code, like this is machine learning paper. So a lot of them will have links to GitHub repositories uh, or anyways, the authors, you want to see the authors, I guess. So the author is also information and uh, all the list of citations, of course. So the idea is that you can just take your search results and then after the search, you can filter them based on the number of citation on the some uh, impact index. So, so like the kind of publications they were published into and uh, also like the more influential kind of uh, authors and this kind of thing. So you can do all of this time, this filtering after the search. Um, if you want to include that in the, in the actual uh, training, uh, that's in, already done in a sense because I went very fast on the on the papers that proposes this model. But how they train the, the model is a triplet network that takes the um, that takes the um, the information from the citation graph. So basically, a triplet network is like a Siamese network with positive and negative examples. So basically, during training, each paper you look at the publications. Uh, sorry, at the citations that the papers has and you connect the papers based on the citations. Um, so that's already a bit done, like at least for the training part. But yeah, definitely as a filtering uh, post, uh, post search, that's something that it's reasonably easy to do and uh, would be very useful. Cool, thanks. Yep, we do have another question. So is there any plans for GNI into edge devices? Um, to be honest, frankly speaking, we were able to get Gina running on Raspberry Pi at the very beginning. Um, and uh, we're looking into these potential for sure, but uh, Gina designed as a cloud native uh, in uh, framework. So it's a very cloud friendly at the moment, but we are more than excited for a potential to uh, put the put the framework be running on edge devices and that's very fascinating future we wanted to know so if you have any of these idea that you might feel gina would be valuable of running on the edge devices let us know um, we are more than excited to hear uh, your advice cool uh, there is another question coming from marcus uh, so on a similar note would it be possible to highlight what part in a document or even page numbers that is most similar to the searched uh, abstract? Yeah, so great question, because that's uh, absolutely something that I think would be super interesting to do. Um, and okay, um, then specific to your question, yes or no? Like you asked, you asked like what part of the paper itself is most similar, right? And for now, I'm my the project is only working with abstract 
uh, it's not working with the full text of the paper. It's only working with the abstract. The idea is that if the abstract is well written, all of the information that you need, at least to to access to yeah to assess the relevance of a paper with respect to another, should be in the abstract. Then of course this is not true in the general case. So first thing yeah first thing yeah at a certain point it would be very nice to extend. Uh, uh, the embedding to the full paper and not only to the to the abstract. So that's uh, that's something that uh, would be very nice to, to do. Uh, and at that point, yeah, it would be probably done in a cross-modal fashion. So at that point, you will have a full paper with the title, abstract, text, like sections and images, tables. So it's a lot of stuff and it would be nice to, to do it actually. Um, yeah, and on the other end, uh, on the other end, yes, it, uh, that's something that you okay. Let's let's stay on the abstract for now. Let's not introduce the full paper, but absolutely you can you can uh, you can try to um, to at least visualize how the one one abstract is similar to another abstract according to the according to the model. And for this, you can do something like uh, saliency maps of the activations of the, your attention ads in the model. You can uh, look at, um, yeah, actually, uh, okay, it gets a bit technical, but there is, there is some cool stuff. Maybe I can share my screen very briefly again and show you more or less what I mean. That would be very nice to integrate. So I, okay. Okay, let's say echo library. Okay, I'm doing a live search. I don't know if it's gonna. No, 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 no. Okay. Wait a sec. So give me just a second because this is very interesting. So it's worth. Uh... No, okay, I cannot. Okay, I found it. Okay, let me see. Okay, I can give, I can put a link in the chat to begin with. And then I can share my screen again. Okay, so now you can see. Uh, okay, so there is this very nice library, for instance, where you can see like, uh, uh, based on a, cer on a certain word. Okay, maybe that example is not super clear. Okay, here it, it's, it's always easier with, the, with images, right? So, so basically like uh, you have like an image here and you can see where the model focuses the attention to, to give you a certain result, okay? And this kind of coloring of the words is the same concept. And, uh, and yeah, like uh, if you look into this blog post, for instance, it's very interesting. It has some very good ideas to do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can think about this kind of, um, of visualization for uh, visualizations for text. It's something that you can include in the model. And with a bit of, um, with a bit of training, you can actually uh, try to understand uh, what it means. Okay, so, so yeah, this would be something that uh, would be nice to integrate. Uh, so I hope this answered the, the question. Okay, um, so do we have anyone else having any questions?
All right, I guess we've uh, basically covered all of the questions for today and uh, really appreciate everyone's time of joining today. And also thank you, uh, Giancarlo and uh, Tadej uh, Shabam of joining today's session. Um, and um, yeah, thanks everybody. So we'll hope to see you very soon in our next Engineer All Hands. And wish everyone Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Coming soon. All right. Happy holidays. Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thanks.